I want to continue the binomial option pricing that I was doing in the previous video. And you'll recall that we had a stock price of 30 and if the, we went to the up state of the world, if the price went up, the price of the stock went to 35. If it went down, it would go to 25. So there's only two things that can happen. The stock goes to 35, the stock goes to 25 in the next period. Now, we know that the option is going to be related to the stock price because the option lets you buy shares of the stock. And so we assumed a $30 exercise price, which means that you can buy the stock, you can buy the stock using the call option for $30 regardless of what the price is. So there's only two states it can take on. If the stock goes up to 35, you can buy it for 30, so the call option is worth 5. If the stock goes to the down state of the world, goes to 25 you don't want to buy it for 30 because you could just go in the open market and buy it for 25 so the call option isn't worth anything and what we talked about at the end was because these two things the, these two assets the call option and the stock move exactly in opposite directions you can create a hedged portfolio by buying shares of stock and selling or writing call options and if you choose H correctly, we call this the hedge ratio, that's the number of shares of stock to buy for every call option you write, we can create a riskless portfolio. That is, the value of our portfolio in the upstate equals the value in the downstate. So what do you do? You basically set the value of the portfolio, which is in the upstate, which is the number of shares times the value of the stock, price of the stock in the upstate, minus the value of the call in the upstate, equal to the value of the portfolio in the down state and you solve for H. And we call that the hedge ratio. And we worked it out that the hedge ratio was one half. So you should buy half a share of stock for every one call option you write. Now, you don't want to do halves. And in fact, I sort of forgot what I was doing when I started this example I'm using the same board that I had before. What you want to do is do a two to one ratio. So buy, buy one share of stock and write two call options. It makes it whole numbers, right? You can't buy a half share of stock anyhow. So, and we showed at the end of the tutorial that you got the same value for the portfolio. So it's a riskless portfolio. Well, if it's a riskless portfolio, it ought to return the riskless rate of return. So we can now solve for the value of the call option because the value of the portfolio at the beginning of the period times 1 plus the interest rate, the risk-free interest rate, up a little F subscript so that we know it's risk-free, has to equal the value in the up state or the value in the down state. They're going to be the same. So let's set up, let's set this equation up here. So the value of the portfolio is going to be H number of shares of stock that we buy times S, the price of the stock at the beginning of the period, minus the call option. Okay, We don't know what that is, and we haven't substituted in our numbers, times 1 plus the risk-free rate should equal, we'll just pick one, VU, upstate of the world. So let's substitute in what we know. We decided we're going to buy one share of stock for 30 and we're going to write two call options. Okay, We don't know what the value of the call is, that's what we want to solve for. And let's say the risk-free rate, let's pick a risk-free rate here, is 5% times 1.05 is going to equal the value in the upstate which is the same as the value of the downstate which is equal to 25. So, what do you do here? Well, basically, you do some algebra to solve this thing out. Okay, Several ways you can do it. I guess you could divide both sides by 1.05. Let me try that. So, let's do this. 30, 30 minus 2c equals 25 divided by 1.05. 
So let's take 25 and divide it by 1.05. So we get $23.81. Okay, 2381. Now, let's move things around here. Hopefully I'll have space to work this out. Let's move the 2C to this side. So let, let's, just, let's just sort of change sides. So we'll have 2C equals 30 minus 2381. All right, so let's see. So I can just make this a negative number. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll make it 30 minus $23.81. Okay, 619. And then we can divide both sides by 2. So we get C equals... Well, let me put it over. I'll tell you what. Let me put it over here where I have a little more room. C equals... Six dollars and nineteen cents divided by two, and so let's divide that by two, and we get we could round off, let's say, three dollars and ten cents. And we could check our results by seeing that if we punch this in, okay, if we put in Thirty, and we put three dollars and ten cents here. Raised it um, to the uh, risk-free rate times one point oh five. We should get twenty-five dollars. So, what do we need to know about this three ten? If the call option doesn't sell for three ten, it will be possible to earn more than a risk-free interest rate without taking any risk. And that's just something that can't happen in the financial markets. What happens in the financial markets is people see this mispricing and they take advantage of what's called an arbitrage opportunity. They sell what's expensive and they buy what's cheap. So if this were selling for $4, what you would do is you would be happy to write call options and buy shares of stock. And you would earn more than the risk-free rate. If it were selling for less than $3, then you should buy the call options and short sell the shares of stock, and you'll also earn more than the risk-free rate. But again, the basic principle here is that options are priced based on the principle of arbitrage. That is, that we created a risk-free portfolio, so it should return the risk-free rate. Right? This is the risk-free rate. So this option has to be priced so that we get a risk-free return. And that's what we've done here. So it turns out that if the price of the uh, call option doesn't sell for 310, there will be an arbitrage opportunity. So you should try and work through this example. It's not particularly complicated. Check for yourself and make sure that, in fact, it is $3.10.